Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us from the Aspen Ideas Festival. My name is Fanny Elahi. I'm a physician scientist working on neurodegenerative diseases at Mount Sinai. Um, my lab focuses on understanding how blood vessel pathologies are leading to brain degeneration and working on drug discovery against these pathologies. It's, it's my great pleasure to be here with Dr. Paul Kenny. Yep, my name is Paul Kenny. I'm the chair of the Nash Family Department of Neuroscience and the director of the Drug Discovery Institute at Mount Sinai, New York. Dr. Kenny, you work on the very important problem of addiction. Can you tell us a little bit about what are the key factors that have led to such an important epidemic of opioid addiction in the U.S.? There are several important drivers um, in the epidemic. I think one of the major drivers, most of us know, is actually accessibility to drugs. Um, it goes kind of without saying that if you have access to a drug, your likelihood of becoming dependent on that drug increases, or if you don't have access to a drug, your likelihood of developing dependency is, is likely going to be lower. And so access to opioid medications in the US has been a problem for 10 or 15 years. So perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that we see problematic use, misuse of opioid-related drugs. But it's not just opioids. Rates of addictions to non-opioid drugs, psychomotor stimulants, have increased dramatically over recent years as well. So it's a problem across the board. And in addition to accessibility, genetics play an important role. And also society. I mean, we now call these um, uh, addiction-related deaths, um, deaths of despair. And that reflects the fact that many people in the US currently are suffering, not just because they're addicted to drugs, but in their life, you know, in terms of how societies are structured, socioeconomic issues, and that is another important factor that increases the likelihood that you'll use drugs and eventually become dependent on them. So do I understand correctly that addiction is not just to opioids, that there may be a predisposition in some individuals to developing addiction when they get exposed to certain substances? Yeah, some people are born predisposed, unfortunately. Um, genetics plays an important role. At least 50% of the risk of someone developing a substance use disorder is influenced by the genes they carry. But we know also that the environment plays a key role too. Your zip code will influence the likelihood that you will develop a substance use disorder. What are some neural pathways or brain mechanisms that underpin addiction? So addiction is largely considered a disorder of neuroplasticity, which means that the brain has changed in response to using drugs of abuse. The brain is incredibly plastic. Its job is to respond to the environment in which we live and the things that happen to our body, that happen to us. And so the brain adapts very rapidly to drugs of abuse, so much so that the body accommodates, if you will, drugs of abuse. It comes to need drugs of abuse in order to function normally. And that accommodation of the drugs, that reestablishment of homeostasis, when you've pushed the body out of homeostasis by using drugs abuse, is likely at the heart of drug addiction. Is your lab leveraging such knowledge for the development of new therapeutics that would combat addiction and opioid addiction? Addiction is a biological disorder. It has biological underpinnings. And like other disorders, other diseases, there are very likely ways that we can intervene to help treat people who suffer from disorders and diseases. And addiction really is no different. So we are really focused in trying to understand drug addiction at the most basic levels in terms of cellular molecular biology, then how those changes impact how the brain works at a systems level. So in four dimensions, if you will but then crucially take that information and begin to test hypotheses in humans and ideally develop new therapeutics that work as a consequence. So yes, we want to develop new drugs that will help treat drug addiction. How close are we to the discovery of drugs that can treat addiction? I think we're very close to developing effective new therapeutics. We have a good understanding of the genetics of addiction, much more so I would argue than in the context of other neuropsychiatric um, disorders. That helps us understand the underlying predispositions. We have good understanding of the pathways that are being impacted in the brain when you overuse drugs of abuse. And many of the pathways and molecules that are being impacted, there's either drugs already available or there's the opportunity to make new drugs to be able to modulate those same pathways. And so I think that the will is there now, the support is there now, and certainly the fundamental knowledge is available that we should be able to develop effective new drugs in Fantastic. the foreseeable future. Wonderful. Can you tell us how use of opioids change the brain other than addiction? What other neuronal pathways and circuits get affected by chronic uh, opioid use? 
So opioids act in the brain primarily at opioid receptors, and there's various different flavors, if you will, of opioid receptors, and they're distributed throughout the brain. And these receptors are incredibly dynamic. So if you stimulate an opioid receptor by consuming an opioid drug, those receptors uh, modulate their function. They respond by changing their function really quickly. And so when you consume opioids regularly, there is a very good chance that pathways involved in motivation, involved in pain, involved in all the processes that we use opioids to, to treat, to impact, those very same pathways and processes are going to be changed in response to chronic opioid use, primarily because the receptors that respond to opioids undergo such dynamic changes, but also the downstream signaling pathways that are engaged by these receptors. Can you tell us about the comorbidity and um, existence of comorbid mental health disorders with addiction in general and opioid addiction specifically? Yeah, ad addictions rarely occur in isolation. In fact, it's rare that an individual will be addicted to what, just one substance. Usually addictions are considered poly addictions. Typically it's multiple drugs that are being used, illicit drugs, uh, especially the case in someone who may have developed a dependency in, on opioids. And so we see um, poly drug use all the time. And so there, it's basically this kind of vulnerability that will render you likely to use not just one drug, but many. So what does that mean for treatment of addiction? Would it be a treatment against addiction that would treat opioid addiction and other kinds of addiction at the same time? Or do you think that there's enough differences between the kinds of addictions that people develop that it would require multiple different therapeutic interventions? I think likely both are true. Both cases are true, where there's opportunities to intervene and develop therapeutics that will specifically target one type of substance use disorder but there's probably common pathways in which all these drugs are feeding into, and that offers you other opportunities to be able to more broadly treat substance use disorders by going to these more fundamental pathways, if you will. And then of course, when you think of comorbidities, it's not just other substance use disorders, but other neuropsychiatric indications. And again, it's rare that someone will suffer from a substance use disorder and not have another comorbid disorder like depression, anxiety, et cetera. So the hope would be that by treating the substance use disorder, you may actually be able to help with some of the other comorbidities that go along with the addiction. Great. Um, now for a final question, can you tell us about the Drug Discovery Institute that you lead at Mount Sinai? Yeah, the Drug Discovery Institute of Mount Sinai is looking to leverage the very basic research, really high-end, cutting-edge research that goes on at Mount Sinai. I mean, one of the aims of the entire medical school, of course, is not just to understand disease biology at the most fundamental levels, but use that information in a way that benefits patients. And so the Drug Discovery Institute is almost a catalyst in that manner. We look to take the most interesting, important insights into disease biology at Mount Sinai, and hopefully, establish early stage drug discovery campaigns and begin to move drug discovery toward human clinical assessment and ideally spark interest from major pharma who are required ultimately to move drugs, new therapeutics into the market. So we want to help facilitate the process uh, in the Drug Discovery Institute. Thank you so much for the important work that you're doing. Thanks for joining us.